Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our solo series of videos. Today we're going to be talking about gear and builds geared specifically towards playing solo. This video will be a lot less concrete information like the Bosco video and the solo orientation. It'll be a lot more gameplay theory and then my personal builds that I run when playing solo. There will be a few things in this video that I explicitly call out as being bad or inferior choices to other things, but in general, unless I say something explicitly like that, assume that everything here is, at least to a degree, my personal preference. I try to align the gear that I use with what is generally considered the most powerful, because I enjoy using powerful builds, but don't take everything I, I run personally as being beyond critique, if that makes sense. But first... Ad time. What is it that it unites us all in the human condition? Is it love of Deep Rock Galactic? The incessant need to consume the latest product? Or is it that we're all about to go play Raid Shadow Legends? The hit mobile RPG with PC quality graphics with 80 million downloads already. And did I mention it's completely free to play? You can play as casually as a DRG Redditor, or as sweaty and competitive as I do. With the all-new in-game content like the Doom Tower, consisting of over 120 floors and all-new bosses, I definitely recommend optimizing your team a little bit before you try to take it on. And with the Call of the Arbiter special event this month bringing a number of new champions and content to the game, there's never been a better time to get started. So with all this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't already started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Make sure you use my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen right now to get these insane bonuses. Look at him! That's Champion Knight Errant from the Bannerlords faction! Him and a number of other useful boosts are yours if you scan my code. Due to the fact that there's probably hundreds of builds and weapon combinations for every class that would be more than viable in solo, I'm not going to be going over an extreme detail on every single overclock and weapon. I'm just going to be giving you a general picture and building theory for how to put these weapons together in a way that supports their natural strengths and covers their natural drawbacks. Now before we go into the individual classes, let's talk about general class gear. For pickaxe, I personally take recharge speed as I find that I need those power attacks a lot more often when playing solo to either pick off lone enemies that I don't have teammates to kill or just to dig through terrain that I'm having to get through by myself because I don't have a driller. And for armor spec, the first three mod tiers are generally up in the air. I made a video on this a while back on what I consider to be the best armor build, and I still stand by that for the most part. The only thing that really changes when specifically looking at solo is the final tier where I always take breathing room in multiplayer, but I think that's a little bit more up for debate in solo. The main reason I advocate for taking breathing room in the final tier, especially when playing on higher difficulties, is because you revive with extremely low health. And unless you have that 6 seconds of invincibility, it's very likely you'll just go down again. In solo, you revive with a bit more health. So, it devalues this mod just a little bit. However, it is much more possible in solo to get downed and then just get revived again with all the same enemies still around you. So for that reason, I still take breathing room in solo. Obviously, there's the tail as old as time argument that's going to be presented, which is, well, if you don't die, it's worthless. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. But if you're looking at the alternatives, which is a pathetically short stun on static discharge or a piddling amount of damage on shockwave, I'd rather just take breathing room for the 1 in 10 missions that I actually get downed once. I still think it's more valuable. Now, talking about general class perks... There's really not a lot of hard and fast rules. I've been over this a few times before. I always run It's a Bug Thing just as a flex. Vampire is extremely good on Driller. I run Veteran Depositor on every class because of the reload, or excuse me, the Deposit Cancel exploit, which makes it faster. I always run Heightened Senses because I run my game volume extremely low. And then on every class other than Driller, where I would take Vampire on Driller, I take Resupplier. And on every class but Scout, I take Dash, and on Scout, I just take Iron Will, because there's really nothing better. Alright, let's talk about individual classes now. The first thing I'd like to touch on for each individual class is their grenade choices. Obviously, on some classes, your grenade choice is going to depend very heavily on what primary and secondary weapons you're going to take. However, on our first class, which is Driller, it really doesn't matter. You should basically always be taking impact axes, 
This is the last time I'm going to say this to avoid sounding like a broken record, but obviously you can get away with running the other grenades if you want to, if you find them more effective, but generally the burst damage of the impact axe is always going to be the best choice. Like I said, this is the last time I'm going to say this, impact axe is the best in slot. There's really not much going on with the driller's gear and mobility tool that's unique to solo. I guess if you want to dig a little bit faster by yourself, you can take more speed upgrades, but really it's same as multiplayer. Now, talking about primaries and secondaries, this is going to be a little bit odd to try to navigate, but let's talk about this. Now, primaries and secondaries. Like I said, this isn't going to be exactly going through every single mod tier one by one, talking about the best possible picks. It's just the general theory and operation. When we're looking at the flamethrower, it's always going to be inferior to its counterparts in dealing with single target enemies. Therefore, you need to take a secondary weapon that's better at dealing with single target enemies if you're taking the flamethrower as your primary. And while the other two can get the job done, I personally find that your best pick when using flamethrower for single target damage in the secondary slot is Sabata with full auto. I find that this is probably one of the reasons I don't use flamethrower very much is that I always feel like there's a hole in my arsenal whenever I'm using flamethrower as my primary, is because I lack an effective way to deal with single target enemies. I don't say this to discourage you from using flamethrower because it is an absolutely monstrous crowd control weapon, but I'm trying to make the point that you should use the flamethrower that way. Always focus on building it in a more crowd control or utility aspect rather than taking face melter and all damage mods and trying to burn down a Praetorium by yourself. The Cryo Cannon really flips the script, whereas instead of killing a massive amount of enemies, it controls one or a few huge enemies more effectively. Cryo Cannon is a bit of a weird pick because it not only controls large enemies, but it does control medium enemies as well, albeit with a little bit more effort. To make this easier, we take Cold Radiance in Tier 5, because this allows you to just dive into a crowd of enemies and freeze them all, or get close to a large enemy and freeze it even faster while holding the stream on it. Radiance is extremely powerful and pairs well with basically all of Driller's secondaries if they're built correctly. And in this case, building them correctly is using them for single target damage against frozen enemies. Mind you, that doesn't mean big single hits, it just means it needs to do a bonus of kinetic damage against frozen enemies. Which also means that taking weak point on something like Sabata is a bad choice, because they'll be frozen. Personally, I pair Cryo Cannon with EPC for the massive utility of EPC. Plus, whenever you're supporting a weaker, quote-unquote, build like EPC that doesn't do as much single target damage with Cryo Cannon, you can buff up its single target damage and make better use of Thin Containment Field while relying less on it as a weapon for direct damage, if that makes sense. And for the third primary, we have the Sludge Pump. It's definitely right in the middle between Flamethrower and Cryo Cannon, whereas if you build it correctly, it can do pretty damn good single target damage against boss type enemies without having to aim at a weak point or rely on your team to burst freezes or in solo yourself to burst freezes. Or you can build it for some sort of massive area control tool with something like Disperser Compound or Goo Bomber Special. I don't know if I'd recommend taking Sabata with Sludge Pump, however there are some great synergies between the Wave Cooker and EPC with Fire. The Wave Cooker also has great synergies with Flamethrower and Cryo Cannon in the form of Temp Shock, although Temp Shock builds are better with Flamethrower. And if you look on screen right now, or down in the description, you can see all of the builds that I run for Driller. The way I'm going to categorize my actual pre-packaged builds for this video are Normal, Single Target, meaning Dreadnought Killing, and Industrial Sabotage. Essentially, if a mission type is not killing dreads or industrial sabotage, I'm always going to be using my generalist build for it. By no means are these my only builds that I use for general purpose combat, but point being, these are builds that I would take into any mission aside from dreads or industrial sabotage. Moving on to the Engineer, his grenade choices are a lot more diverse. Depending on the build you want to take, lures can be the right choice if you use something like EM Discharge on the stubby, or turret arc if you're deranged. Generally though, I think Shredder Swarm grenades are the most reliable and effortless attack option in the NG's grenade slot. It allows you to focus a lot more on what you're doing with your primary and secondary weapon as well as moving around with platforms and placing turrets. Not having to carefully place a proximity mine or worry about ricocheting a plasma burster back into yourself, it takes a little bit more off your plate unless you focus on what you're already doing. That being said, pretty much all of NG's grenade options are usable, although I consider plasmas and proxies pretty bad these days. 
Engineer is probably the most extreme example of this conversation point that I'm talking about, which is balancing between single target and crowd control. It's extremely easy when building the engineer to take two crowd control weapons or s two single target weapons and find yourself just absolutely helpless. So starting with primaries, we have a Warthog. Warthog is basically always a single target damage weapon. You can use it to cut down a crowd of grunts, but the point being is it's not hitting more than one enemy at a time, but no matter how you build it. For this reason, the Warthog pairs best with high crowd control or mass damage secondaries like Fat Boy or Shard Diffractor with something like Plascrete Catalyst. Another valuable thing of note is that tier 5 on the Warthog, you should always take Turret Whip. Minor adjustments is just not worth your time. Stubby is a odd beast. It can go into a single target damage roll, but personally I really don't think it does it very well. It's always been more well suited in my experience for a crowd control roll with either the electricity mods on the base weapon or something like turret arc or EM discharge. All the other overclocks just kind of half bake the weapon into a single target damage thing and even with EM refire booster it really just doesn't hit as hard as something like lock or warthog. So personally, I wouldn't recommend taking anything on Stubby other than some sort of crowd control build. And this is where we flip the opposite direction, where you should take a single target damage secondary like Hyper Propellant, basically anything you can do with Breach Cutter aside from Spinning Death, or Overdrive Booster on the Shard Diffractor. And finally, we have the Lock, the Smart Rifle, in the primary slot. A lot like the Sludge Pump, it can do both, depending on which way you build it. And it does both extremely well. The polarizing ends of the spectrum being explosive chemical rounds for extremely good crowd control and then executioner for unbelievably good single target damage. There's definitely an argument to be made that Locke does the single target and crowd control roles better than the alternative primaries. Personally I find it a little bit too clunky to use so I rarely use it if at all, but the point stands as it did with Stubby and Warthog, which is if you build it for single target, take a crowd control secondary. If you build it for crowd control, take a single target damage secondary. But just like the other weapons, if you build it one way, chase your secondary the other way. Now I'm actually going to touch on NG secondaries as they're a little bit more diverse and meaningful than the drillers. First we have the PGL, which a lot like the primaries can go both ways, it's just a little bit more extreme. You can build it for general purpose crowd control with something like Compact Rounds or RJ if you're deranged, or you can go the opposite direction with Hyper Propellant, and there is a nice middle ground to be found with Fat Boy as well. Next you can take Breach Cutter, which definitely leans a little bit more towards single target, but if you put in the effort when it comes to kiting enemies, it can be used for a good crowd control tool as well. Generally, I don't think it's considered to be a single target weapon by the people that use it very often. Whenever you think about the Breach Cutter, most people will refer, just think of cutting down a swarm of grunts with one shot, but I think the Breach Cutter really shines best when it's used on a build with a primary like EM Discharge or ECR on the lock, and using it to burst down heavy targets with something like Inferno. But that's just me. It's definitely a good crowd control weapon as well, so it's quite diverse. Even without an overclock, it can support either a single target lacking or crowd control lacking build. And finally, Shard Diffractor definitely leans a lot more towards the crowd control role with things like Plascrete Catalyst and Volatile Impact Reactor. The only really extremely good single target overclock in my opinion is Overdrive Booster. Feedback Loop can do well as a single target damage overclock, but I think it really falls short considering half of the bonus of Feedback Loop is the increased area, so even at that it falls into a more crowd control area. Moving on to the Gunner, he's in a lot of the same situation as the Engineer when it comes to his grenade choices. They're all pretty similar, the only real standout one being incendiaries, being able to apply fire to enemies, so if you're running a build with something like Volatile Bullets, that might be a boon to you. But in general, all the grenades on Gunner are kind of accomplish the same role, which is just direct damage. Only when getting to this point in the video am I starting to realize just how a lot of redundant what I'm saying is, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it up a little bit and start moving through the weapons a little bit more quickly just to get to the builds. The minigun is always going to be best at single target damage. It can be twisted with bullet hell to be a pseudo crowd control weapon, but it really doesn't do the job well at all. You're always going to have to support minigun with a, some sort of crowd control secondary like coil gun, or something like a high mag BRT or Bulldog. 
Auto cannon strikes the happy medium and really is in that Goldilocks zone as far as gunner primaries go, as it can do pretty respectable direct damage, as well as having incredible splash at the same time. For this reason, Big Bertha kind of becomes one of the best things you can take as a gunner primary, just because it does so much effective splash damage while also having comparable single target damage to the best single target weapons in the primary slot. Really the only thing that grossly overshadows Big Bertha when it comes to single target damage is Jet Fuel Homebrew, and that has a lot of drawbacks when it comes to everything but single target damage. Obviously there's Neurotoxin to put on the auto cannon as your primary, which is fine I guess in solo. It's definitely a little bit more respectable in solo than it is in multiplayer as you're not deferring that aggro onto your teammates, though personally I think Neurotoxin just makes you worse at the game in general and probably makes you focus a lot too much of your time on combat, whereas you should just be killing those bugs and moving on. That's a lot of personal bias though, so I won't talk too much on that. Obviously, if you're going to take a heavily crowd control oriented auto cannon, you need to take something single target damage focused in your secondary slot. And Hurricane is probably the most diverse and flexible of any primary weapon in the game. Just because you can take something like Salvo for a combination of single target and crowd control, Jet Fuel Homebrew for unbelievable single target damage, or Mind Layer where you can literally just look at your feet and spin in a circle and no bug will even be able to touch you. So really the Hurricane excels at anything that you build it for as long as you build it right. Bulldog is best suited to be a single target damage weapon, so if you're taking something AoE focused, Bulldog should be your go-to. BRT is always going to be a single target damage weapon. There's really nothing meaningful you can do to change it into an area control weapon. There's Electro Mindlets, but I mean, why would you do that when you could take something that does damage instead? And finally, Coil Gun does decently for single target damage if you run something like Mole or Triple Tech. But really the best build for the coil gun is always going to be Hellfire, which is extremely good at crowd control. And finally, moving over to Scout, his grenades are pretty build dependent as well. However, Pheromones and Boomerang really aren't very good in most builds that you use them in. Generally, you have to take a build that will support it. Pheromones isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. It just kind of does something you don't really need to do as Scout in solo, which is distract the bugs. Scout's ability in solo to literally have 100% control of every enemy in the map and where they're pathing to really removes a lot of the need for any sort of debuffing or crowd controlling effects that aren't directly related to killing the enemies. Which is why IFGs are still good, because while it does slow enemies, that's not the point of it. The point of it is that 30% damage bonus and bundling them all up together for big cleaving hits. Moving on to weapons, the GK2 is best suited when overclocked as a single target damage weapon. Things like Electrifying Reload are really gimmicky and not really worth your time. You should just be focusing on gearing it for doing the most damage possible to the enemy that's directly under your crosshairs. Unfortunately, the GK2 falls short in a lot of places even when doing its single target damage roll due to how gimmicky a lot of its single target damage overclocks are, but we'll get to that in a minute. Obviously, if you're gearing towards a single target damage build on the GK2, you need something heavily crowd controllable on your secondary. And unfortunately, while this is an opinion that goes quite against the grain, I really don't think there's very many great AoE options in Scout's secondary slot. Many people advocate for Fire Spread on the Boomstick or Cryo Mindlets on the Zukovs. Personally, I really think Cryo and Fire Bolts on the Crossbow are the only crowd control or AoE option worth talking about in the secondary slot. Everything else is really kind of falls short in a lot of ways. So the reason I said that a lot of GK2's overclocks fall short when it comes to single target in the overall hierarchy is because M1000 exists. There's really not a build you can put together on GK2 that outdoes M1000's speed and ease when it comes to building it for the same role. It suffers from a lot of the same drawbacks, but generally its stats and overall combat performance just outpaces GK2. The reason for this being that the things like Bullets of Mercy or AI stability engines on the GK2 require specific conditions to be met, like an enemy being stunned, frozen, debuffed to get any sort of bonus against it, whereas the M1000 produces a similar result without requiring any debuffs on the enemy, and if they are debuffed, it's just an additional bonus. Or looking at something like AI Stability Engine, which suffers greatly whenever fighting armored targets, the M1000 just punches directly through that armor and doesn't care. Not to mention that most builds that you're taking on M1000 don't really suffer from hitting armor as badly 
as the extreme damage fall off you get from AI stability engine with a massive base damage reduction. A lot of personal opinion here, you can make AI stability engine work and Bullets of Mercy can do good for you, but when it comes to playing solo, a lot of the power of your builds is speed and ease. Less about setting enemies up to knock down with Bullets of Mercy and more about just left clicking on them with something like Hipster. By nature, M1000 is an extremely, extremely single target damage focused weapon. But with something like Hipster, you can easily gear it to kill every single enemy in a crowd one by one, if that makes sense. I've been advocating for Hipster to get nerfed for about a year and a half now, and the fact that it hasn't yet is pretty hilarious because it really is just the best thing you can take in a primary slot on Scout. And finally we have the Drac, which I still admittedly it's probably the weapon I've played the least amount of time with up until this point in the game. There's a lot of gimmick overclocks on it that have either been bad since release or have been nerfed down to a point that they're not really worth considering when it comes to actually combat effect. Things like rewiring mod can be interesting for keeping a 100% uptime on your speed boost and things like impact deflection can certainly spray projectiles all around the room and hit a lot of enemies. And things like shield battery booster can get you laughed out of the club. Point being, a lot of what's going on with Drac is just not really that effective and it suffers from the same situation as GK2 does where it's best builds are gimmicky and require a lot of active effort to make good use of. There's really not too much worth talking about when it comes to the scout secondaries. There's really not much worth talking about when it comes to scout secondaries. The boomstick is pretty underwhelming all around. The only real standout features of it is doing something like incredible burst damage with jumbo shells or special powder for utility. But they're basically just that. Jumbo powder for single target damage and special powder for utility. There's not a lot of in-between that does anything meaningful there. The Zukovs are a little bit better than Boomstick in that they have things like gas recycling, which is a very strong option for the non-thinky playstyle where you just shoot anything that's flesh. Overall, embedded detonators is the best thing you can put on the Zukovs, and that falls them cleanly into the single target damage camp. And lastly, we have the Bolt Shark Crossbow, which these days is the only secondary I'm running on Scout because it just provides you so, so much utility. And it's basically two weapons in one with the special bolts and the overclock primary bolts. For example, if you take something like taser bolts as your special bolt and fire bolts as your primary, you have not only really good crowd control with fire bolts, but you also have taser bolts to stun down and slowly burn to death anything larger than a Praetorian. Pheromone bolts can be pretty powerful for their utility, but I haven't used them that much myself. When you talk about just pheromoning one or two bugs, it's less likely to control the entire swarm. And like I mentioned when we talk about the pheromone grenades, pheromones are a lot less valuable as a solo scout whenever you have every bug in the cave under your control. Bodkin points are popular as a crowd control option. I personally don't know why, as killing three grunts has little to no value in my opinion, whenever you have options like cryo and fire bolts on the table. Cryo is a little bit too inconsistent in my opinion to use effectively. Some people certainly can, but the most easy and effective option you're always going to have on the crossbow in your primary slot is fire bolts. For crowd control, I should say. Trifork is extremely potent against single target enemies like dreads. Ugh, oh god. Well, that's how you talk about weapons and say nothing in particular for about 20 minutes. Yikes. I went on a little bit longer than I meant to, so I apologize for that. Like I said, builds will be linked down in the description as well, as well as the ones that were on screen throughout. Like I said, there's plenty of other viable builds, but these are the ones that I use in certain scenarios. So, you'll see a lot of duplicates for different purposes, but that's just how the cookie crumbles, that's how I run builds. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time.